Welcome to A Walk in My Stilettos, where our goal is to help you walk in your greatness. I'm your host, Makini Smith. The purpose of this show is to inspire you to walk in your greatness. We have conversations with amazing women that are letting us take a step into their stilettos. I get inspired when I see another woman succeeding in life, but what inspires me more is her backstory and her mindset of how she got there. And today's guest is about to bless us with her testimony. Trust me. So since you're already here, you may as well subscribe. But I just wanted to take a quick second to to read a review. I mean, the reviews that have been coming in about the show have been so beautiful. And I just wanted to thank the people that actually take the time to leave us a review on the podcast on iTunes. So this review is from Mosha. And she says, thank you for having a platform for incredible women to not only share their stories, but a place where we can come together and support each other. Each episode always seems to remind me to challenge the very hurdles I may be facing. I'm looking forward to more episodes that have been helping me to become exactly who I need and want to be. Thank you, Moshe, for that beautiful review. We appreciate you. So let's get into today's show. Our special guest for today, her name is Monique Prince. She is a wife, a mother of 10, founder of Beauty Secrets, a faith-filled support group challenging women to seek what is deep within. She's the co-owner of two popular barbershops in the greater Toronto area called All My Son's Hair of Art Studio and an activist in the community that has organized fundraisers for women with cancer, underprivileged children, and most recently a walk crusade of hundreds called Sons Stop Shooting Our Sons, and that was to raise awareness around gun violence. So please welcome to the show, Monique Prince. Good morning, good day, good (laughs) afternoon. (laughs) Amen and amen. Hello, McKinney. It is such a pleasure. Thank you for considering me to be a part of this wonderful broadcast. One thing I really admire about you, Makini, and I'm going to try my best not to be biased on this conversation, uh, (laughs) is your consistency, you know, and your your determination to push and already 30 plus interviews. So to be a part and to be considered by you is truly an honor. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Mo. And honestly, I have so many beautiful women in my network and I made a whole list of whose story I needed to share. And you were definitely on there. So thank you for taking the time to come on. (laughs) Amen. When you said it, I was like, really? Yes. (laughs) My answer is yes. Yes, yes. (laughs) I love it. I love it. You have an amazing testimony. And before we get into that, I'd like to start with an icebreaker question. And that question is, Monique, do you know what your name means? Amen. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know what my name means if I were to find a definition, but I do know that my mom named me after a soap opera, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 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 an actress, So I said to my mom, mom, I hope she was not full of all kinds of drama. And she says, Monique knows it was someone she loved. So no, I don't know what my name means. So funny enough, we're called our name so many times a day and our name holds weight. So whatever the meaning is behind your name, it becomes a a depiction of of who we are. And when I Googled Monique, it means advisor. Amen. (laughs) Well, my answer is yes. (laughs) That's amazing. And you know what? Now that you say it, uh, Makini, I'm glad that I didn't Google because I'm just I'm so thrilled. Wow. Amen. Amen. I love it it because that's exactly who you are. Wow. (laughs) Well, listen, you you can't make me speechless on the conversation, please. And, and, (laughs) So, Don't worry, we're going to get right into everything that you know the most about, which is you and your life. So my yes. my my next question would be, you know, what did you want to be when you were a little girl? It's amazing that you say that. Uh, I most recently did a workshop for young ladies at a high school. And the revelation that I got was I remember being a teenager, a young teenager, you know, just about 13 or 14, and being in their seat and witnessing a woman speak before.
for me, mentoring me and things like that. And it came right back to me. I remember saying to myself, I want to be just like her. Mm -hmm. And the workshop standing in front of these teenagers, you know, and you know, teenagers, it's like, Mm -hmm. sometimes uh, it's a hard shell to crack. I, I had to, I had a moment and I said to myself, oh my goodness, I remember saying, I want to be like that woman standing in front of me speaking, and here I am full circle. Wow. So, yes. So, and that was most recently, like within the last couple of months, I remember saying, I wanted to be a dancer and I wanted to be a singer. And I also remember going to uh, my mother's homeland, Jamaica, when I was about six years old. And I remember looking and seeing all this land and saying, I want to build a hospital because my mom lived in the country and it was really far at six years old asking a question, how long does it take to get to a hospital? And they said two hours and remember saying, yes. And remember saying, I want to build a hospital here. So it was always in the direction of wanting to make change. And here I am. That's beautiful. Well, speaking of making change and being a world changer, you have added some beautiful blessings to this world, which I mean, let's just get into, I'm sure, the most popular question. How on earth (laughs) do you look so amazing and have 10 beautiful children? Like, Amen. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to say a lot of amens and a lot of yeses because, you know, really, you know, really it is, it is just the grace of the Lord. I, having 10 children, it's just amazing to me. You know, I'm at that place in my life where I'm looking and I'm saying, are all of you mine? Are you, do you Mm -hmm. all belong to me? But Mm -hmm. here I am and, and running behind them a lot. Uh, staying active constantly and also for myself realizing that yes I am a mother of 10 children however I still am an individual so it it is important to just still remember me and take care of me and remember the things that I love and being healthy is one of them I'm not I, I'm mm-hmm. not a gym lady every day but oh, definitely well, we're gonna staying. we're gonna get into the, the, the self-care in a minute we're, yes, we're gonna get back okay. to that part so okay so let's start with how old are the children so my eldest is 22 and then I have a 16 year old a 14 year old uh, to be 11 year old uh, this coming um, just in a couple of days I have a 10 year old and an eight year old and a seven year old and I have Moriah, who is four years old, and then the twins uh, that are two and a half. My God. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Bless you. Okay. And out of all 10 children, you only have two girls. Out of all 10 children, I have two girls. I have eight sons and two baby girls. Wow. So w- one thing I want um, the audience to hear, you have, okay, you have... 10 children, but they are so well behaved and they take care of each other. So how do you keep them? I'm going to say so behaved because there are some of us with just three children (laughs) and and I don't feel that we have that much order with the children as what I observe with you and the 10. Well, thank you. Thank you for seeing it and saying it. And that's really encouraging to me. Because as a parent, you try to instill and train them up as who they're supposed to be. And what they do as an example is an example, I believe, of of who you are as a parent. Mind you, children have their own minds. But it it takes a lot of work. It is a lot of work in-house. Uh, before they go outside, before they go to school, before the aunties and the uncles and the friends and family members, teachers get to see them. It it is a lot of work Mm in-house. So I will say that my husband and I, uh, God bless my husband for choosing to be a a man of God and as well as a father. It's a lot of teamwork between him and I. Uh, Having one voice, He'll mm-hmm. always say, if I say no, please make sure that you're also saying no and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and that's really what it takes to raise 10 children. It also does take a lot of organization and a lot of preparation because the reality of it is, is that we have multiple children and it takes all hands on deck. 
so without <laughs> without uh, child labor, if you call it, uh, it's important for our children to be hands on with one another. You know, if you mm-hmm. if you're getting out of the vehicle and you're the older one, please ensure that you're overseeing your younger sibling coming out of the vehicle. Don't turn your back and uh, without helping. So mm-hmm. we, it's it's a lot of repetition. It's a lot mm-hmm. of repetition, a lot of repetition. Sometimes I feel like I have to have a bottle of water in my purse when I'm walking <laughs> because it's a lot of repetition. And uh, however, oh, so worth it because I'm very thankful that they're great children. Well, speaking of, of teamwork between you and your husband, you both own All My Son's Barbershop. So what's the story behind the name? Wow. All My Son's uh, Hair of Art Studio, which is a barber shop, was placed in my husband's heart. It was a vision of my husband's. And amazingly enough, at the time, I believe we only had four sons. Mm-hmm. So my husband, he's an avid reader, and uh, he, he has his own personal walk with the Lord. And he was writing and journaling, and this name came to mind, and he wrote mm-hmm. it down. And uh it was in his intention at the time to that was in about that was about 2009 it was in his intention to eventually own business even then not knowing that it would be a barbershop uh mm-hmm. because it was a hobby of his he was doing he had other ventures at the time and he wrote down the name all my sons uh so here you have it full speed uh when it was time for him to open up the shop he pulled out his booklet and he said, this is what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be Mm -hmm. called All My Sons. And we only had four sons at the time. So be careful the things that you speak of. (laughs) And now you have eight. (laughs) And now we have eight sons. So literally, um, uh, the revelation that he continues to get is it's just not his sons. It's Mm -hmm. all the sons of the community, Mm -hmm. um, all the sons of each um, city that he purposes to open business in and uh it it's been in total manifestation where my husband is able to speak to young men and mentor young men alongside his son so there you have it all my son's wow. care of art studio <laughs> i love it i absolutely love it like even with a handful well literally two handfuls you know yes. you still dedicate time to serving others, both you and your husband. But what I love is your level of love and patience that you deal with others when you do it. So I want to get into talking about beauty secrets and you intentionally spell it seek as an S E E K. And I want people to know, like it's a monthly meetup, but you do this on both ends of the cities. So start with what inspired you to start. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, you know, McKinney, thank you so much. It's amazing because as we're speaking, it's like I'm still ever so present and I'm reminding myself of the purpose of doing these initiatives and starting uh, a group such as Beauty Secrets. And if it's okay with you, uh, I have an affirmation in the morning that I say to myself. Mm-hmm. It's a declaration. Some people call it an mm-hmm. affirmation. I call it a declaration. And if mm-hmm. it's okay for me to share, I yeah. state that... I am an ambassador of God, leading people to the love of Jesus Christ through being a living example. Mm. And that is my declaration that I am an ambassador of God, leading people to the love of Jesus Christ through being a living example. And I say that first because of that, a group such as Beauty Secret falls into place. Uh, Because of that, being blessed to be a wife and be a mother of 10 children fall into place. Being blessed to own business falls into place. So a group such as Beauty Secrets was inspired through my own journey and my own processing, uh, being the example that I want to see. Beauty Mm -hmm. Secrets started and was birthed from a very low place in my life. I went from starting out as a very young girl, being on my own at 17, starting with having an apartment, starting my family, having my children very early. Uh, So I went from being in an apartment, being in a condo, from a condo to a townhouse, from a townhouse to a house, and then in 2011, going from a house back to a three-bedroom apartment. And I was at a very low point in my life. 
uh, I felt like my independence and everything that I worked for was going up in the air. It was a total transition. It was a spiritual shift for me. I made decisions in my life to walk away from the world that I knew and serve God, which was a place uh, and a world that was unknown to me. Mm-hmm. And because of the feeling and because of the physical um, changes that were happening, all I could have done was speak to myself. All I could have done was encourage myself. Uh, it took a lot of silence and a lot of shame and a lot of doubt before I got to that place where I could speak to myself. But when mm-hmm. I did get to that place, I started to speak in my three-bedroom apartment with sheets on my window. Uh, I think the sheets being at my window was just my example of giving up. I didn't have a desire to put nails in the wall or put a rod up or anything like that. And Mm -hmm. uh, I started speaking to myself. I started listening to life changers and those who were speaking life uh, on whatever I could do, Google, Mm -hmm. YouTube. Uh, and I started speaking to myself. I went from speaking to myself and encouraging myself from, uh, you know, not wanting to take a shower, not wanting to take care of myself, not wanting to comb my hair, doing everything for my children, doing my due diligence. Mm-hmm. So I had, uh, I believe at the time, two little ones. And I would get my other children out the door, make sure that they have their lunches, make sure that they're okay but mommy wasn't okay, but Mm -hmm. I wouldn't show that I'm not okay. In their eyes, I was okay. Get Mm -hmm. my my eldest son off to high school, kiss them goodbye, and then be at home with my little ones, um, anticipating for them to take a nap so I can just be in the slow place. Mm -hmm. So when I started talking to myself and I not realizing, I started speaking to my spirit and waking up and activating my spirit to fight back, I started standing up in my living room and it was like the Lord was saying to me, now, Monique, what would you say to the next young lady going through what you're going through? Mm -hmm. And I started speaking in my living room as if I was speaking to women, speaking to other young ladies, going through what I'm going through. And beauty secrets came about. Wow. So I, re- yeah, I remember <laughs> having, <laughs> I remember having Bristol board on my table and markers and the Bristol board and markers were just for my children when they came home and they would color and they would do all these things. Amazingly enough, that was at the time, all I believed I could afford for them to have as activity because I didn't have what I thought what I believe to be, you know, money to buy them the toys that they wanted or have these iPods or, you know, these different Mm -hmm. devices, these leapfrogs and things like that Mm -hmm. for my children at their age. So I went to the dollar store and I bought all kinds of Bristol board and uh, markers and pencil crayons and crayons and just allowed them to create. And I thought that in my mind of defeat at the time, I thought that, you know, they would be encouraged and, and be happy for what I could afford to give them. And, Mm -hmm. you know, children are amazing and they're, and they're so tenacious and they don't see the things that we see. It was one of the best activities that they had. And and until this day, even now that things have changed, that's all they do. They love to color. Mm -hmm. So I took the Bristol board and I started writing the things that I heard in my mind and my heart. I started writing it on the Bristol board and I heard beauty secrets, you know, what we, yeah, what we want to share from the inside out. What are some of the beauty secrets that we can share to encourage other women? So that was done. And I had this Bristol board and I had purple markers, red markers, (laughs) and it was, it was beautiful. It was colorful. My husband comes home and I said to him, because I'm, you know, he's, he's my, he's my everything. And I, and I said to my husband, pops, this is, this is what has been in my heart. This is what God is saying. And he looked at it Mm -hmm. and he said it was spelt beauty secrets as you would spell the word secrets. And he said Mm -hmm. to me after listening, Monique, spell it this way, S-E-E-K-R-E-T-S, because everything you do, Monique, has to do with seeking. And I was like, there it is 
Beauty wow. Secrets. That's beautiful. Yes. How many years has it been since Beauty Secrets started? Okay, so Beauty Secrets was birthed on paper in 2012 uh, mm-hmm. and started in 2013. So it's already been wow. six years. Wow. Talk about consistency. Wow. That's beautiful. And then on on top of all of that, you know, you serve at church, you bring your kids to sports and, you know, they dance and they do all these things. Like, how do you manage? I guess what women would probably want to know is how do you balance? How do you balance everything? It's amazing that you say that because, you know, when you sit down and if we were to write a list as women, amazing women, that we are called to be, to do so much, to be so multifaceted, to be so... If you were to write a list, it sounds like, whoa, that's a whole lot of stuff. However, in a day, you can only do so much. Mm -hmm. So I I always say to myself, I'm going to do what I can do today, and what I cannot do today, I do tomorrow. The balance consists of my core relationship. I mentioned earlier changing my journey, my core relationship with the Lord, Uh, finding the balance there, finding my center point, finding my foundation, and then everything from that consisting of preparation. So I I always tell my children, if you're planning your day today and it's today, you've already, you've already planned too late. You know, um, the word of God says, don't worry about tomorrow for today has enough worries of its own. Um, however, God gives us wisdom and it's wise to plan for the next day. So with all that, you know, I'm called to do as a mother, it's so important for me to plan. Mm-hmm. Lots of planning. I can totally see that. <laughs> so what is your self-care routine? How do you take care of Monique? Yes. You know, the secret for me is taking care of myself from the inside out. So spiritually, and then allowing what needs to manifest on the outside physically, manifest physically. So my self-care has a lot to do with my relationship with the Lord. You know, if I could relate to someone who may not see where I'm coming from that point of view. It's your method, your method of survival, your method of finding your balance, your method of finding your encouragement. Mm -hmm. My relationship with the Lord is my method of finding my balance, my encouragement, my self-worth, my self-value. And from there, developing that uh, has allowed me to develop a a prayer life. It's allowed me to develop a study life to find out and to seek. So it's allowed me to develop a reading life to be able to uh, just grow for self. And then the physical benefits is just having the desire and the willingness you know, the energy to want to comb my hair, <laughs> to, <laughs> run, to, want, to want to run behind the children, to want to go on a date night with my husband, um, which are some of the physical things that we have to do just to be encouraged, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I find my internal core motivation through having a relationship with the Lord, and that internal core motivation, when it's charged, allows me and gives me the energy to have, to be able to take care of myself physically, you know, and emotionally, if you will. I'm sure for a woman with 10 children, a husband, you do community work, you serve at the church, you have all these things that you're responsible for. Is there ever a time in the day where you get alone time? I'm going to say now, yes. And I'm going to say now, <laughs> yes. <because laughs> I'm learning I'm learning now to take intentional time for myself. Uh, mm-hmm. Before, I would say no. I would just do all, be all for all, and then, you know, and find my satisfaction and my reward in everything that I've done for my family, everything that I've done for business, everything that I've even done for Beauty Secrets. So Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for growth because Mm -hmm. now in 2019, (laughs) I I can say, yes, I take time for myself. What that looks like for me, sometimes on Wednesdays, I will go to Bible study by myself. Mm -hmm. Before, I felt like being by myself, I was alone or I wasn't doing or maybe something happened between my husband and I. So I'm, I'm taking a drive or something like that. 
Mm-hmm. But now I've kind of got rid of my stinking thinking and realized that <laughs> no, taking time for myself is a good thing. Yes. Love it. Yes. Okay. So with all of that, to get to the Monique that you are today in 2019, what adversities have you had to overcome to get to where you are? I will say that one of the biggest adversities that I had to overcome was walking away from a world that I knew. And what I mean by that is when I found my method, which was my journey in Christ, it was totally opposite to what everyone who I believed to be somebody, who I believed to be loved ones, who I believed to be friends. It was totally opposite of what they were doing. That was a big um, part of that, or that was a big piv- and, and a pivotal point for me where adversity was concerned because I, I felt like I lost uh, in order to gain. And even at the time, I didn't feel like I was gaining much. I just felt like I was losing my mind and I was not doing what everybody else was doing. And, and because of that, I'm walking away from my friends. They haven't done anything to me. I'm walking away from my social groups. They haven't done anything to me. And Monique, what's your problem? So mm-hmm. that was a big part of adversity for me to overcome. That took time because I had to undo a lot of of my own mindset. It took time because it had to do with a lot of internal and spiritual purging, uh, really Mm -hmm. identifying who was who, really identifying who was for you, understanding that the people that you party with are not your friends. They're just people that you party with type of thing. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, So that was, that was a a big part of uh, adversity for me and dealing. The other moment of adversity for me was, what I considered losing it all. I I use the example and I paint the picture by saying I felt like in 2011 when I said yes, Lord, meaning I'm just I, I'm not going to be lukewarm. I'm going to go on this journey. I felt like my life. Someone took my life and threw it up in the air, and mm-hmm. it just fell on the ground. And whatever broke broke. Whatever I could pick up and walk away with, that's what I could pick up and walk away with where I physically lost things. I lost my home. Uh, I was losing my health. My health was diminishing. Uh, I had a child and I was discharged from the hospital within 24 hours and leaving the hospital, I was fine. But the day after I had a fever of over a hundred, was admitted into the eMERGE, uh, was told that I had to remove my ovaries, um, Wow. My legs started to, yes, my legs started to give away. No one knew what was happening. I couldn't walk. No one knew why I couldn't walk. I developed uh, pneumonia in both my left and right lung. No one knew what was going on, and no one had any answers for me. They were just running tests, and no one had any answers for me whatsoever. Wow. Uh, that was a big level of adversity for me because in my quest, in my journey to do what I thought was the right thing, I was thinking to myself, if I'm doing the right thing, how come everything looks so wrong? Mm -hmm. How come everything feels so wrong? What's happening to my life? But again, it was a level of adversity where I really had to comb through, deal with each situation, do a lot of seeking prayer, um, healing, and find myself again, Mm -hmm. develop the spirit of fighting again. And uh, fight and pull and push spiritually, not physically, and uh, really come out of that level of adversity. So, yeah. Your level of uh, strength and resilience is definitely admirable. So, my next question is you know, have you had any mentors or coaches help you along the way to get through any of those things or to get to where you are today? Because a lot of people feel like they're in a place where they're alone and 
it's interesting to hear everyone's story. So I'd love to know if you've had any mentors or coaches that have helped you. Amen. My mentors and coaches at the time, I, I didn't even realize who they weren't certified, if you will. They weren't a certified mentor or a certified <laughs> mm-hmm. coach, but I had, I had loved ones around me. I had individuals who the Lord placed in my life specifically for that season to speak into my life. Uh, Mm -hmm. to tell me that I can, to be able to bring me a meal if I needed it, to be able to just listen, to be able to catch my tears if if I cried. So I will say, yes, I had mentors and, and angels, angels who were placed in my life to get me through that season. I didn't seek professional help or counsel or therapy of any kind. However, again, because of what I believe to be my journey with the Lord, I believe through prayer, the Lord always sent someone. The Lord always sent someone. Uh, And it it wasn't always consistent, like one person only or two people only. It was per per moment, per situation, per per event. Someone was always sent to speak or say something or do, do an act of love to encourage me and keep me going. Beautiful. Beautiful. Speaking of uh, encouragement, I remember there was a beauty secret meeting that you had. And I loved that at the end portion of every beauty secret, you had an activity and yes. you, you always referenced, you know, your, your kids do arts and crafts and activities, but as women, how it's amazing to be able to relax and be creative and be inspired by each other. She had an activity and I'm trying to recall if it was just mine that was a stiletto or if everyone had a stiletto that we cut cut out. I think we all had one, right? Yes. (laughs) Was it just my my mind? But we, we all had a stiletto and we were supposed to write things on them about our walk, I believe. Yeah. And I had that on my vision board for a long time because wow. on my stiletto, I had, I had, I think that activity helped me realize my, where my obsession and love for stilettos came from, <laughs> because it's wow. not just about the visual of the shoe, you know, it was about right. being able to, to walk in purpose, to walk gracefully, like to be, feel elevated. There were so many subconscious meanings of a stiletto to me. So I found this article that did some research and it says that your favorite type of shoe says a lot about your personality. Wow. So my next question to you, Mo, is <laughs> what is your favorite type of shoe? Is it a running shoe? Is it a flip-flop? Is it a boot? Is it a wedge, a pump? What's your yeah. favorite type of shoe? Well, that's amazing. So in regards to that stiletto, McKinney, I will say that that activity was dedicated to you because I believe it was. Oh, I love you. (laughs) Yes, it was. It really was. And uh, I'll never forget. I remember Googling a stiletto and asking for like an image or an outline. And I I remember running to the printer and printing it off and cutting it out and being like, oh, my God, she's going to love this. And yes, you're right. We did. We did write, and it was so important. And again, it was just um, in honor of putting uh, a token to remember the conversation that we have when you're at Beauty Secrets. So that was dedicated to you, and uh, I'm glad. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's so amazing. It's so amazing to see, you know, and to hear you say that you had it on your vision board. That means a lot to me. Uh, However, so in regards to a shoe. Let me tell you, I've had some seasons where I'm like, listen, I, it's all about the pumps or it's all about the running shoes. Uh, <laughs> but I love boots. I love boots. I love boots. Tall boots, short boots, ankle boots. <laughs> I love <laughs> boots. I love, if I were to say, I mean, you know, we all have, it's just amazing when you grow up in Toronto and you have that tomboy, you know, coming up as a tomboy, you can wear anything, right? So it says, uh, the person who loves wearing boots will always be the one to take control of the situation. They're quick on their feet and able to make clear, rational decisions. This woman is exceptionally self-assured, so people around her feel instantly safe in her hands. She loves being the center stage and is very assertive. Goosebumps. Yes. <laughs> Does yes. that sound like one? <laughs> Yes. Yes. And can I just say amen? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so before we go to the final segment of the show, I want you to tell people where they can stay connected with you online. 
Absolutely. Uh, I'm on Facebook. You can get me Monique Prince as well as my Beauty Secrets Instagram page at Beauty Secrets. Um, you can also get me on my website, uh, www.beautysecrets.com. And you can get me on my Beauty Secrets group. If you're interested in being a part of the group, just getting words of inspiration or the meets for the meets that we have both in uh, Pickering, excuse me, Ajax and Brampton, you can get us on the Beauty Secrets group. So yes, those are my means of communication. Thank you. Thank you. So I will put the links um, directly to those pages in the podcast details so people can find you and follow you directly. The final segment of the show, I usually call it a walk in her stilettos. And today, in honor of Monique, we're calling it a walk in her boots, where That's she's right. just, <laughs> I'm just going to ask a couple of reflection questions. And you just say the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Okay. So... If you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, what would it say and why? It would say, trust God. Mm. Trust God. Trust God in your walk. Trust God in your journey. Trust God in your decisions and, and everything that you're believing for. Trust God. Because I believe that when you have the Lord in your heart, when you have the Lord in your life, you can attain everything and anything and you can overcome everything and anything that comes in your way as adversity so i would say trust god amen okay uh next question what have you become better at saying no to in the last five years and that, that could be distractions one. invitations yes. family Yes. Well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to take that from you. And I'm going to say, I've, I have learned to say no to invitations, um, Mm -hmm. opportunities that I don't believe are for me personally, but someone would see it fit for me to be a part of their vision, Mm -hmm. their opportunity, uh, their event. I have learned Mm -hmm. to say no and, and say no in love, not, Mm -hmm with intentions to insult, not with intentions to be condescending or demeaning of any sort, but I definitely have learned to say no to invitations. I think that is beautiful. I've had so many women come on in the last, um, well, the last bunch of episodes that have said right. the same thing. Everyone yes. right now is is in a season of alignment. Nobody you know, wants to continue hustling hard and and saying yes to everything and exhausting themselves physically, mentally, emotionally. So learning to say no to what doesn't align with your spirit, like that's important. It it really is. It it really is because I, I say it and I believe that others say it too. I don't have time to waste time. And Mm -hmm. if you, if an individual has an event or they have a vision or they have an opportunity of some kind and they're extending their hand for me to be a part, it's not that what they're doing is a waste of their time, but it may be a waste of my time because of where I'm going, right? Mm -hmm. It may be a Mm -hmm. waste of time, as you said, according to what I need Mm -hmm. and with just with me and my journey, you know, if man is saying go this way, but God is saying go that way, it's just a matter of time where I'm just going the wrong way. And I, and Mm -hmm. I have to kind of go backwards before I go forward. And I've done Mm -hmm. that way too many times. And I'm just at a point where I don't have time to waste time. Totally, totally understand. Okay. So name one of the most worthwhile investments you've ever made. And that could be money, time, energy. Having my children. <laughs> I, I knew that was <laughs> Did you? Yes. <laughs> Having my children. What an investment. Um, mm-hmm. Carrying them. Uh, it's just amazing. As I said, sometimes I'm an onlooker of my own my own life experiences. I I said to myself, like, you really carried each child, thanks mm-hmm. be to God, full term. You really mm-hmm. did that. You really carried twins. And mm-hmm. in, in some seasons, you really worked up until the last two weeks, full labor, full active labor, laboring in, in work, that is, mm-hmm. with these children in, in your tummy. And, and here they are. And 
so thankful that they're healthy and they're now on their journey and witnessing my eldest be a chef and the conversations, bringing him in the kitchen at 13 years old, <laughs> teaching him how to cut a green pepper. And now he's doing catering for conferences in Toronto. Amazing. Um, right? It, it, what an investment. What an investment. Amen. So that is my greatest investment. Uh, and and after that, not the least of it by any means, is, is my investment in my marriage. Mm. Um Marriage is something that we can easily justify when things happen and, and situations happen. It's not peaches and cream all the time. It's not peaches and cream every season. But uh, in where I am right now in my life and just both my husband and I being lovers of the Lord, where we are, I'm just so thankful that I said yes to the investment because I have a life partner so those are two amen amen like yeah and and i want people to know like literally when you say life partner you and your husband he's your high school well since you were how old yeah oh yes since i was 17 <laughs> years old yes like you're, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're a high school sweetheart you know he's the father of all yeah. of your children like people need amen. to understand this that is commitment. Yes. that is an investment that's beautiful yes. that's beautiful so what new belief behavior or habit has improved your life in the last five years? That's amazing. My new belief is one of my new declarations. Uh, Monique, do not count yourself out. Mm. And it, my declaration looks like this, Monique Prince. I, Monique Prince, will not count myself out. Not to count myself out. Uh, we can really, if I can speak on behalf of of many women possibly who feel the same way, count ourselves out and think that our story is not important, think that we're not certified, mm -hmm. we're not qualified, we're not good enough, we're not, you know, we don't have 100,000 followers on social media, it, we're not mm -hmm. adequate. And, and in order to be this person or to uh, have this level of platform or leadership or just to be a doer, that you need to fall in the level of qualification. So I've, I've learned not to count myself out because I, I understand completely now that no one has certified me. God has certified me. That's right. Amen. Amen. I, I love it. I love that you say that because you <laughs> are enough. You deserve to be in every room that you walk in. You deserve to sit at every table that you decide to be at. And yes. when you say that like, God certified you, I remember when I first started mentoring. And I started, yes. you know, having imposter syndrome and mm. my leadership coach had her certification and I was mentoring women on her behalf. And I started to feel like I need to get certified to be able to do this. And she said to me, you have more life experience and wisdom to right. help these women than anyone that has just run and quickly got a certificate and learned some, yes. some book smarts. You don't need to be certified. Mm. And wow. I continued to serve, you know, I made the choice about a year or two ago to be certified in order to quiet that voice inside of me. But you were right. totally right. Like God certified me long before any man did. Yes. So I love that. And, thank and you. Yes. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for asking me. And, and if I had, if I had three seconds to share one scripture, it would be Matthew, uh, chapter 6, verse 33, where this was what I ran with when I had to realize that no money, man doesn't certify you, God does. And mm -hmm. in that scripture, the Lord says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to me. And when I started to walk in that scripture practically and really seek God in all of his righteousness, I, I literally seen things come to me, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's really what it is. God has certified me, not man. Amen. Amen. Monique, I want to thank you for coming on today and sharing your gems with us. You are absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm positive that the audience has gotten so much value from just hearing your testimony. Thank you.
Oh, and I, I thank you for the opportunity, McKinney, and may the Lord continue to expand your horizons and, and expand, broaden your territory so that you can continue to change and affect lives. Thank you. Thank you. And to all of our listeners, until next time, download the Awaken in My Stilettos app and subscribe to our newsletter at awakenmystilettos.com. And I want to hear from you. If you have not shared with me your feedback or your thoughts about the show, please do so now on iTunes. Rate the podcast, subscribe, leave us a review, share your thoughts about what Monique had to share. What value did she place into your heart? Be sure to take a screenshot for this episode and tag Monique and myself. We're on Instagram at Beauty Secret and at the real McKinney Smith. Send in your feedback. We love to hear it and continue to walk in greatness in your stilettos in a manner worthy of your calling. <laughs>